Hello, I'm Allegra Madsen, the Director of Programs at Frameline, and thank you for joining us for Frameline 45. Uh, I am super excited to have you all here for the Q&A for Jump Darling. Uh, today I'm joined by the writer and director Phil Connell and Thomas DuPlessis, who stars as Russell in the film. Hello, how are y'all doing? Great, how are you? We're great. great, thank you for having us. Absolutely, welcome, thank you for joining me, and Mike, Seriously, congrats on a beautiful and moving film. I mean, what a story that you have managed to bring to life. Um, this was actually one of the first films that I was able to screen as uh, in my role as the program director. And I was just incredibly moved by this, like uh, the story that you put together, this moment of family life that you capture that is sort of this like uh, intergenerational ships passing in the night story to me like there's this transitional moment that the two characters meet each other that is really beautiful and i'm trying really hard to dance around just saying tell me everything but it, what are the what are the origins of this story how did where did it come from yeah um again thanks for having us and thanks for bringing the you know the film to frameline we're so grateful uh to premiere the film to u.s audiences at frameline um, such a special, iconic festival. And so for us to be there um, uh, with this film is just just really cool. And especially given that Cloris is an icon and an ally as well, um, mm -hmm. to have her there, um, you know, in this kind of swan song performance. Um, yeah, so the origins, I mean, you know, I, I um, family dramas were the films that got me into wanting to make films. And so I knew that a family drama was a place for me to start. Um, and um, at the time that I started writing it, I was dealing with a lot of end of life conversations with my grandmother. And so that became um, a foundational element to the story. And I was also sort of uh, reconfirming and reconfirming um, uh, my commitment to making films as a queer artist and kind of dealing with some of the struggles associated with that. So it was kind of those two key themes that came together um, in the writing process to birth what ultimately became the story. Amazing, amazing. Um, so Thomas, your character Russell is sort of this um, burgeoning drag queen, <laughs> and I was I was just wondering, um, what, what your performance was were just so killer and so amazing. Like, how did you how did you tackle this? Do you do you have drag experience? I mean, uh, you know, I kind of idolize drag performers and this like ferocious artistry and i also know that it is like 100 percent beyond me i mean there's something i call my nice sweatshirt in my wardrobe <laughs> so if that kind of gives you a uh i mean what was it like for you to sort of step into this queer performance art world um from the drag point of view i mean it was it was kind of a dream come true i mean i have a you know i've been watching drag uh in the village here in toronto for the last you know 12 years i have close friends who do it and um, it's something that I've always been, you know, curious about throwing my hat in and trying. Uh, I did go to musical theater school. So, you know, I do have like a bit of a dance background, but it was, it was the first time that I had um, really done drag, but it was kind of just this permission to like go off and just be, you know, get that opportunity to be kind of, you know, my, my dream drag queen kind of persona opportunity. So it just kind of, you know, ran with it. It was absolutely amazing. And the song choices, I mean, the music, everything, so spot on, I mean, beautiful performances. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I wanted to also hit on uh, casting for this. Um, I mean, I think the casting of this film was absolutely brilliant. Um, Wonder if Phil, if you could sort of speak to the the, the special sauce that that brought Thomas and this powerhouse Cloris Leachman together as 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 Margaret and Russell. Yeah, so um, you know a, a bunch of strategy and then a bunch of luck and magic. I think um, you know the the sort of idea you know going back years with this film was to see if we could. Uh, we thought we had an opportunity just based on the sort of gravitas of the role of Margaret and it was this film carrying role for an actor, you know, over the age of 85. And so we thought 
kind of that that might give us an opportunity to cast a star in the role of Margaret. And so um, we sort of set that as a goal. Let's cast a star in the role of Margaret and let's discover a star uh, for the role of Russell. And um, that's kind of what we did. So on the one hand, we were kind of doing the Hollywood offer dance film. Once we kind of had some financing in place and we're in a position to to go out to stars, we worked with a cast our casting director, Jesse Griffiths, to um, start reaching out to Hollywood agents. And, and there's a pretty short list of, of women in that ca category um, and seeing who was interested in Cloris's team bit and um, liked the script and, and she was down to do it, which was perfect because, you know, Cloris A was perfect for the role. Um, but um, I'm losing my train of thought on that, but it'll come back to me. But on the other side, um, you know, we, we were, for the role of Russell, what we really needed was somebody who could um, handle the high drama of the role, the classic family drama, as well as be this really raw performer who was to some degree un, unformed, like discovering their art and figuring it out as they go along. So we sort of, you know, the idea was we could find someone fresh and, and new um, that the world largely hadn't seen, which would also give us the freedom to find, you know, a queer performer and everything else to give the story the authenticity that it needed. Um, so while we were doing the sort of paper author to agent, uh, you know, offer to agents on the one side, we were doing an open call on the other side. So we did an open call to actors across Canada. We saw over 150 people for the role. Um, and, uh, you know, Thomas kind of shone through early on in the process, though we did make him go through a ton of cycles and a lot of work. Um, and then, you know, we never screen tested them together. We just kind of were like, let's um, see what happens. And, you know, we were just blessed by the fact that though these two actors, Thomas and Cloris, just had this wonderful chemistry that ended up, you know, really forming the kind of beating heart of the film, which is what we needed and wanted. But, you know, we didn't get a chance to screen. We weren't going to get a chance to screen test whoever we cast as Russell with Cloris. So we just had to kind of hope that it worked. So, uh, so Thomas, your first time meeting Cloris Leachman was uh, then on on set. How how was that for you? Uh, yeah, it, it was. Once I found out that you know Phil had actually set it up so that I actually wouldn't meet Cloris until we started rolling in the scene, um, I was, you know, I was freaking out. Um, you know, they kind of called me down to rehearse and. You know, I was standing on my mark and my back is is to camera in that scene. And, you know, then I heard kind of like this shuffling um, and I heard this voice say, where's my mark? And I was like, oh, my God, it's chorus. Like she's right behind me. We've been mad. Uh, and then I clued in what they were doing. They were going to start rolling and I was going to turn around and say, hi, Grams. And it was the very first time I was ever going to meet slash see her. Uh, and so, I mean, I could feel like my heart. But like you could see like my shirt doing this. I was so <laughs> nervous. Um, but he wasn't you know, the only one. Everybody on set felt the same way. You could cut the tension with a knife. Yeah, but as soon as I, you know, kind of turned around and you know said the line and we kind of went with it, it uh it kind of broke the ice and then it was just laughs after that. That's amazing. That is a really amazing scene. I I there's something unspoken about it, but you can really you could really tell something special was happening when you turned around and and, and y'all met for the first time or yeah. well y'all saw each other as grand grandma and grandson for the first time mm -hmm. well and it was and that was to your point like part of the it was it, the shooting schedule just turned out that we were shooting the first time they were going to be meeting as the first scene so it was just sort of this opportunity this magic opportunity it's like okay well if they're meeting for the first time in the scene haven't seen each other for so long as characters why don't we have them meet in the scene so it wasn't just to torture the actors there was, <laughs> there was an idea that you know maybe it would add some extra oomph to what we ultimately captured absolutely um so i an aspect of this film that i i thought was really profound is this um the, the idea of, of transition and, and people in transitional moments in their lives coming together momentarily and, and learning from each other and, and sort of you know, seeing each other's position from a different perspective. Um, and I feel like, you know, from what you're, 
it's sort of embedded in the structure in the of the film, uh, you know, from the casting choices and everyone to be, you know, being in sort of transitional moments in their lives and, and careers. Uh, you kind of touched on this already, Thomas, but uh, Phil, was there like a, a, a crazy moment where you realized this is my first feature and of course I am directing a, leg a living legend? Um. I would say yes and no. I mean, we it, there was so there was so much um, there was there was so much lead up and planning to try and try and make the dream come true, which which was to cast Chloris in this role. Um, that by the time we were actually on set, you know, you know, some of that had some of that had been digested, and I had been preparing for that and. Um, you know, people have asked me, which is I think kind of part of your question, which is like, you know, were you intimidated and how was it, you know, working with someone of the stature when, you know, I just didn't have, you know, um, 60 years of experience directing actors or, or stars. And, um, you know, I'd say in the first day or the first couple hours, absolutely. But Cloris was such a pro um, and she was so there for the work and for the script and for the process that it very quickly became if anything easier because you know you she could you know she was just this pro right I mean I could I could say that was great let's can we try this and you know it was she would do it you know and she would give you something different all the time she was you know she was such a she gave so much as an actor that it actually made my job easier um so once I got past the the intimidation factor and realized that she was there you know, to serve the story, uh, you know, it actually, did, you know, we had a, we had an amazing time, you know, we really did have um, this amazing time on this shoot together. There was so the relationships were just bubbling with love and joy. And, um, you know, she loved being there and we loved having her, you know, so it, that kind of took over. Um, when you were all sort of together, you know, maybe offset, including uh, Chloris, uh, were there any lessons or stories that 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 you take away from from your time with her? Uh, just you know, as a as a power, a Hollywood powerhouse. Yeah, I mean, I think we each we each had uh, probably our own individual moments. I mean, I remember one like moment of immense flattery and reinforcement that I got from her um was kind of towards the end of the end of the shoot and we were kind of alone in, in the car together you know waiting for something to happen um and um and she said you know you're so you're 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 so specific about how you know you 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 have very clear ideas and you're so specific about things and she said you keep doing that because that makes all the difference you know and I just was like oh you know um, you know, cause a lot of the time when you're being so specific about things, you're driving everybody crazy. Um, but, uh, you know, she, her, you know, so it was a really lovely moment. Uh, yeah, I, um, I mean, there, there's so many, but a, a couple that kind of stick out, there were uh, multiple times when I'd be on set with her in between takes and, uh, kind of like maybe away from, um, the main kind of action that was going on and she would she would open up to me and become actually like quite vulnerable and almost um, self-conscious. Uh, and she would, she would ask me, you know, what she would say, like, what am I like to work with? Um, am, am I doing well? Like, do you think I'm doing a good job? Um, and she would open up about how it feels to be 93 years old and acting versus how she felt about it when she was younger. And, um, we would just open up to each other about actor insecurities, which is, I mean, the last thing that I would expect to kind of like share with somebody who's been doing it for over 70 years. Um, so that was like a really kind of, those conversations were really kind of like special and intimate. Um, but, you know, then, then there was also the flip side, you know, we'd be eating dinner together and, you know, she'd be spitting corn at me across the table and like swinging the spaghetti out of her mouth and, you know, things like that. She, she kind of, you know, she pushed the limits sometimes and it was great. She was such a, she was such a goofball, yeah. you know, she was such a rascal, you know, so she made it, she made it, she made it a really kind of playful environment for everybody. Um, 
and and brought so much vulnerability that was just you know you're like oh right like you know that feeling that you have you know that drives you to you know create good work like sticks with you you know it doesn't it actually doesn't go away it never goes away and you know that was crazy to 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 see that's really it's really beautiful that drive never goes away and also the uh the the insecurity too <laughs> sticks with you um i think that's really it's a really beautiful thing that i think comes out in the film itself that like i i keep I keep I just keep imagining ships passing in the night in the night and just meeting each other in this moment and then just having so much just coming together for this moment and then having to pass uh, keep going. I, I just think it's really beautiful in the way that that it was brought out in the film and in the casting and just it just didn't really embedded in the film itself. Uh, and I, I love that the last starring role of Cloris Leachman, this long time LGBTQ plus rights advocate and ally um, is this story it, it, that I think is kind of represents a, a, a new, uh, a newer trend in, in queer storytelling that isn't about um, having to come out to grandma. Like grandma wants to be, wants you to be the best damn drag queen you can be, <laughs> you know, like be who you are. Um, yeah, I guess this, this one really isn't a question, but I, I really want to just, say congratulations and thank you for making this beautiful queer story. And I really would love to hear like what plans you have for the film, where, what's it, where's it going to next? Where can, we, where can we see it that's not, that's the next step beyond Frameline? Right, right. Yeah, so um, we've got a number of festivals planned. Uh, so Frameline is obviously a US premiere. We premiered in, in both Canada where it's from and in Europe at, at Flair. And so we're expecting, um, a uh, bit of a festival run in the States following uh, Frameline, which we're really, really excited about. And uh, similarly in Europe, um, it's about to play a bunch more festivals there. It, it just played in Switzerland there, at Pink Apple Festival. Um, we're, we're very close to being able to announce a, a sales deal in Europe and we're, you know, kind of flirting with uh, distribution offers in the States as well. Um, so very much hoping and, and planning for it to get a wide release at some point in the States, probably looking at uh, kind of later this year after a bit of a festival run um, and uh, in, in Europe as well. So, I, you know, like we're working very hard to, you know, to make sure that um, what we feel is a, is a pretty good movie and, and I, um, but especially these two kind of standout performances of these two particular characters and it being such an iconic um um role for Cloris and and given that she passed this year that we really want to make sure people get to see it uh yeah i i hope that i didn't understate in any way your role thomas the the two of you together are are just absolutely amazing i feel like you both played off each other in such a, an amazing uh, amazing way I, congratulations um yeah, also I wanted to mention that if you viewers out there have friends and family out in San Francisco to join us for the in-person in-theater premiere at the Castro Theater on Saturday, June 26 at 6 p.m., we would love to share this film in, in, in the room with you. Um, and, you know, just as a little salacious tidbit, I hear on the internet uh, grave, grapevine that uh, there may be a little uh, post-film love story. Is there you know, anything you two want to share? <laughs> well, so yes, we did We did get together after we wrapped shooting and have been together ever since, which is coming up on, on two years now. We, we shot the film in June 2019 and um, yeah, it was, we didn't know each other before, we didn't know each other before, um, um, we started shooting and, and, you know, there's the cliche, I guess, exists for a reason, you know, it's a very intimate sort of experience, you know, the actor director thing, first feature for both of us. And, um, we just uh, had a great time working together and yeah, we got together at the rap party. <laughs> there was sort of this weird moment where it was like, uh, you know, is this just one of those weird, you know, we're really close for a moment and that's all it is things, or is there actually something here? And, he said yes there might be something here and here we are the rest is history well, congratulations on so much i i uh, i really enjoyed talking with you and please again join us at the castro theater if you are in town on june 26 at 6 p.m all right thank you thank you thank you